Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you five of the most interesting effects that I found inside of DaVinci Resolve 17's free version. So, these are all effects you can use right out of the box. The first one I want to show off is the video collage effect. So this is an extremely useful effect in that it allows you to create a split screen without putting in a lot of manual effort. So as you can see, when you use this video effect, video collage, which you can find over in the effects library, and then down here at the bottom in Resolve Effects Transform Video Collage, you can get four tile areas in order to set your video clips. And you can also have a background playing at the same time. Now these don't have to all be moving image actual video. You could just use a static image like a JPEG or a PNG as well, but it allows you to easily have these split screens. Also note a couple extra features of it include having rounded corners for these areas, the ability to split this uh, tile grid into not only a two by two grid, but you can go three by three or even more if you want to have a whole bunch of tiles. And I just did a video on how to set up this effect. So if you're interested, go ahead and check out that video. There's a few tricks involved, but it's not too hard to use at all and you can get pretty good results. The next effect here I want to talk about is invert color. So inside of Resolve Effects color menu, of course, that's under open effects and the effects library you can find invert color here. Now that in itself isn't too fancy of a feature. Most image editing programs like GIMP are also going to have a similar function. So if we turn on invert color, it's gonna take the color values inside of this video image and flip them around. But what I think is interesting about this specific implementation of invert color is that there's actually check boxes for each of the main colors for video, red, green, and blue. So if you're willing to spend a minute and play around with it on your video clip you can see that by removing some of these check boxes in this case leaving the reds as they were originally but inverting the greens and blues that this gives you the ability to create some very interesting color setups so you can mix and match it how you want so if you want to invert blue but keep the greens and the reds you can do that you could invert red solely or green solely or blue solely but by using the invert color effect in this way you can get a very interesting stylized look which could be used for different purposes maybe in a music video or a title sequence when you're just going for a stylized look that's meant to stand out and not look very realistic so the next three effects I want to show off here are actually transitions, but I believe all of them are relatively new to Resolve as they are fusion transitions, a relatively recent addition. So if we go over to video transitions, once again in the effects library, uh, let's toggle media pool off there so we can expand this. And then we go all the way down here to the bottom, you'll see this relatively new category fusion transitions where a lot of more complicated transitions can be found. So first up at the top here, we have brightness flash. It's a very slick transition where it's going to brighten up the screen and then lower it back down as it fades into the second shot. So you can see that this is a lot more interesting than simply a dip to color where we make the screen white. Since it's not exactly doing that, it's just making the screen very bright, but you can still vividly see a lot of the colors. So I could see this being a very handy transition to use. So if you wanna use the brightness flash or any other transition, you can just drag it on the border between two clips. Sometimes when I do that drag and drop, it doesn't actually add it properly to the border between two clips and it doesn't really give you a message specifically with fusion transitions. So if you run into that issue, just make sure that when you left click on the border between your clips, that it has this green light indicator showing that on the source material for where this clip is pulling from, that there's still some extra video information. So when you left click and hold, you can see that white box and that's the extra information that you can pull into. If you go all the way to the end of the source clip, then that's when you end up with this red border, meaning there's nothing else for it to pull into. And a transition needs a little bit on each side generally for that to work. The next transition we're gonna show is burn away. So if we come down here to the bottom, resolve effects transitions, burn away, then we can see that this effect is basically exactly what the name would imply. So this effect ends up being sort of like a wipe from one corner to the other, but with the added effect of burning away at the edges of your first video clip to reveal the second. So what's interesting about this one is just that as a template, it would save you a lot of time if you needed to recreate something like this. You can see uh, there's quite a few visual elements that go into this kind of transition. 
So we can, just like before, drag this on the border between two of our video clips. And then if we want, we can change the angle for that fade as well. So if we want it to go from top left to bottom right instead, then we just need to change this angle. So let's make it all the way over here. Let's zoom in a bit and uh, take a look at the different freeze frames of that transition. So now it's going from top left to bottom right. So if you scroll down on this burn away effect, you can see that there's also a lot more slide scales that you can play around with in order to get the effect to look just how you want. So if we increase the raggedness, then we can see this makes the paper look a lot. For instance, if we think that these areas close to the burn border are a little overly warped, then we could decrease the mount effect, making it look a little bit more like the original image. If we want this black area to come out further, we can increase the char. We can also change the char color so it doesn't have to be black. We can make it something like a shade of dark red or switch that over to more of a brown. And then if we want to emphasize this fire and make it pop out a bit more, then we can increase the burn. And if we wanted to take this fire border and uh, stretch it out a bit further, then we can increase the burn. Now of, course, one of, now, of course, one of the great things about Resolve that you can also use with this tool is the keyframing ability. So as you can see, all of these properties have a keyframing diamond. So if you need to change one of these properties across time, you can just set a keyframe at one point in your timeline, go to another point, set the keyframe, change the value, and then Resolve can animate between those two properties. So you're gonna be quite flexible on how you decide to use this effect. And the fifth effect for this video is tunnel of light. So similar to the brightness flash, this is going to be warping the screen with a light based effect. So as you can see in the center here, it's like you're getting sucked into a vortex or a tunnel in this case. And when you come out the other side, you have the new video clip on. You have the and then when you come out the other side, you're at the second video clip. So if we scrub through the effect preview over here in the effects library, we can kind of see how as it progresses, it sucks away the first shot, you get into the tunnel. And then when we pop out, the second video clip appears onto the screen and then we continue. So in our timeline, this is roughly what it's gonna look like frame by frame. A little choppy since I'm showing while recording at the same time. And we also have some settings here to play around with as well. So if you need to change the color inside of here, then we can shift that away from a pure white. We can make it really red if we wanted to. And so with this effect, there is a bit of a glow in the center here. So that is the main thing we can adjust. So if we want to adjust this glow, we can increase the size and you can see the radius kind of right about here, a circle around the center increase the gain to make it more obvious. So right now it's basically a white glow, but we can shift that with any RGB values that we want. So we could have a very rad color effect, or we can make it more, we can make it more green, decrease the blue, basically whatever you think looks good. So for these effects that fall into the fusion transition category or fusion effects, you may notice over here to the right of them in the inspector, you can actually jump into the Fusion page editor to see the effects and make modifications to them if you want. So we can just take this tunnel of light, go over to Fusion. And then here we can see the actual effect is grouped inside of here and this tunnel of light node. So if we double click in that, then you can see all of the nodes that actually make up this effect. So if you really wanted to, you could dissect these fusion transitions, add extra elements to them or remove certain elements as well. Maybe for the soft glow, you don't want the shape feeding into it to be an ellipse. So you could change it out from an ellipse to something like a rectangle shape or a custom image silhouette. But just to show there that one of the cool things about the fusion transitions and fusion effects is that you can actually go ahead and edit them and make them your own if you need to. So that's going to be five of the coolest effects that I've found digging around in Resolve 17.1. I hope all of you enjoyed this video. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my future video content.